Now let's take HANA database. When they have started this HANA database idea, earlier, how was our server configurations? It, in the go back to the times, we'll be having CPU, one single CPU with single core, okay, and small memories, your RAMs, you'll get 16 GB RAM, okay, 8 GB RAM, 4 GB RAM, and the disk with uh, uh, 1 TB hard disk, 2 TB hard disk, let's take. So, very small, your server configuration is very less when compared to your hardware resources. What are the resources? Your performance of your, any software depends upon your res hardware resources, like your CPU, memory, and disk, all these things. But nowadays, you are getting the servers with a huge configurations, right? All the CPUs are coming with uh, like uh, uh, 64 core CPU, okay, uh, 128 core CPU, 256 core CPU, 512 core CPUs, means one one CPU with multiple cores, one CPU is working as two cores, right? So it can be able to do the massive parallel processing capacity. And now you are getting huge memories, 1 TB RAM, 2 TB RAM you are getting. And disk also, 5 TB, 10 TB, whatever you want, you are getting. Now, the hardware capacity is changed when compared to earlier. All your traditional databases have written the code for this mechanism, single process and small memory and small disk. But now, parallel processing, multi threading after coming of this multiple CPUs if you throw one statement to the CPU it will break your statement into multiple chunks and all these multiple cores will processing that and it is giving you a result within fraction of seconds now you have to use this new generation hardware resources so they have written the code like they have done some innovations which are suitable for this new generation servers what are the resource uh, innovations they have done? At hardware innovations and software innovations. At hardware innovations, multi-core architecture means your CPU. Within one CPU, you are having multiple cores, two cores. So if you are having 16 CPUs, means it will work as a 32 thread. It can uh, process 32, uh, like a 32 uh, CPU, right? And massive parallel processing it can do by using multi-threading technology. And scalable memory you can increase your memory to whatever extent you want you can increase the memory and don't want to go into hardware innovations especially today i'm going to focus on this software innovations what are the software innovations majorly remember these things row and columnar store tables what is this and compression partitioning no aggregate tables insert only on delta what is this row and columnar store tables means in earlier, all your traditional databases are using row-based tables. All your databases has row-based tables. But HANA database has come up with a new concept called, called as columnar stored tables. And remember, this HANA database is supporting for both row stored tables as well as columnar stored tables. Most of the HANA database tables are columnar store tables all your application related tables means if you create sales order purchase order material order whatever everything will be stored in the columnar store table only system application tables are columnar store tables only your system tables are row based tables when you install your s4 HANA, so when you are creating any table on hana database you may have an option whether you want to create a row based table or whether you want to create a columnar store table but when you are installing S4 HANA, so you don't have any option, right? SAP itself, it, it will at the time of installation itself, it will create some tables, right? From that tables, almost all the tables are columnar store tables. Only a few tables are row based tables. So, what is the greatness of columnar store table? First thing. So, how your row store table presents the data? how your columnar store table presents the data. See the difference. So, this is a table. Tables are logical format, right? If you open the table, if you want to try to read the table, you cannot say, okay, it is a row store table or it is a columnar store table. It will look like any table in a database is comprised of rows and columns. The combination of rows and columns, you can call it as a table, right? But when it comes to the storage, how they are storing the data internally is, row store table 
will store the data like this columnar store table will store the data like this okay i'll go with uh, some simple example let's take this uh, table okay this is my row based table how it is storing the data it is immaterial to you okay table is a table when you open the table it will show you the rows and columns but internally the storage is different how they are storing means let's take one example i am having some table this is row based let's take example of row based table so here i am having all the rows right so if employee name department employee id and salary so if a new employee joins the organization let's take vijay joined the organization what is the department basis okay employee id you write something sap h12 something and the salary some 75000 usd right so if i want to update this employee record i have to update a single row so row based tables are right optimistic they are right optimistic means writing is easy for row based tables so column no store tables how they store like this so i want a aggregation of all the salaries it will read only this row so these are read optimistic row based table is write optimistic and column no store table is read optimistic now in your organizations what activity you do more reading or writing you read more or write more read read, read. read. right if you want to purchase a mobile on amazon or some any website so i'll go through all the mobiles which are in my price range right so i'll do some r and d i'll do all the uh, companies mobiles all everything all the features all these operations are what read operations only only one time i'll book my mobile that is what write operation so in hana database most of the tables are column no store tables most of the tables are column no store tables so reading is very fast in hana database we are doing reading more right so obviously the performance will be increasing when you are storing your data in a column no store manner and by default the nature of this column of store tables are they maintain some dictionary values they maintain some dictionary compressed column of store tables maintain compression by default by using dictionary values let's take example here i am having country names belgium denmark france so duplication of data is there see denmark two times italy three times right so what it will do in columnar store table so it will give you a value to each and every country so wherever you are having italy it is writing just four so if i write italy 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 for three times instead of that i can write four 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 italy means one two three four five characters five characters five characters 15 characters i need to write if i write four for three times it is largely greatly reducing your footprint right yes or no and it will maintain this dictionary values like this it will organize your data for each and every country they will write a code so in a database to improve the performance generally what we use we use indexing concept right so if it is a row based ta table so what we do we create a separate index for that to creating a index also you need some amount of memory right that is also not required in columnar store table in columnar store table every column itself works as a index so instead of this they use inverted index in normal index what you do this is your value 
this is rho id this is rho id and value but in the inverted index is what value will be first and rho id will be last so value is 4 4 is what italy so if you send one statement select where is italy so wherever we are having italy second fourth and eighth so it will write like this inverted index is nothing but it is a reverse for your normal index rho id value here it is saving value first and after that it is saving rho id rho id so by using this type of compression by default it will use this compression mechanism columnar store table so it is greatly reducing the data greatly reducing the data not this apart from this you can also implement some compression techniques by default it is having compression by using that compression it is greatly reducing your data right yesterday we have seen how much data we, if you only convert your database for hana database if you go with hana database you need not to do anything your ecc only but if you go with hana database 593 GB data is going to 118 GB. You don't do anything. No manual uh, compressions, nothing. You just install HANA database. You migrated this data to HANA database. So by default, this columnar store tables will maintain dictionary compression and it will use this uh, inverted index, no need of your indexes. By using that, it is going into 118 GB. 118 GB, ECC6 on HANA it will go to 118 GB. If you convert this ECC6 to S4 HANA, all your ECC tables are gone. Only few tables are, you don't need history tables, aggregate tables, right? So, it is going into 42 GB. Apart from this basic compression, you can maintain extra compression also. If you want, you can implement prefix encoding, run code encoding, cluster encoding like this. Like, see, I am having 44444, 8 times. So, you can write 8, 4 times. So, it is very advanced things. So, like that, you can maintain some compression techniques. By using that compression techniques also, you can greatly reduce the data. So, columnar store table is, why we are using columnar store table? Columnar store table is read optimistic. And it is by defaultly, it is having compression mechanism within it. So it is greatly reducing the data as well as it is bringing performance to your read operations. We do more reading. Yes or no? And you know this uh, part, partitioning. Partitioning means what? In HANA database, generally, if you take any other database, if you are having one table with, uh, let's take, uh, 40 billion records so if you want to search something from that table it will take so much time but hana database every table has a limit you should not go beyond 2 billion records so if you, the table is reaching 2 billion records immediately it will do the partitioning of the table so you will have one table with multiple partitions now this hana database is supporting for massive parallel scaling scalable memory you can install this hana database on multiple hosts as well multiple host means you will get extra processors extra memory if you give one statement to hana database this sql statement will be break between different different chunks and multiple host multiple hardware resource processors will process it and it will immediately throw you the result so super fast result by doing partitioning of the tables and you know no aggregate tables no aggregate tables means what? Generally, in your earlier uh, versions, you used to have aggregate tables. So, when you used to have aggregate tables means this. So, you are having your tables and they used to maintain aggregate tables. Why? Your database won't do aggregates on the fly. So, they used to maintain aggregate tables. But this HANA database is having parallel, uh, pa massive parallel processing by this capacity it is doing aggregates on the on the fly so we are not using any aggregate tables if you want any aggregate you just give that uh, query to hana database it is giving you the aggregates 
immediately. Got it? So I'll give you one example. So there is some earlier days how you write the code. If you want some, uh, if you want to do some calculations, first your application will connect to the database. It has to fetch the data from some ten thousand tables. So your application used to connect to database. From database, all these ten thousand tables it will load into the application, where your all the logic will work, and it will do all the calculations for you. That is what called as a classical approach, where it is doing the calculations more at which layer? At application. application. But after coming of Hana. You have written a new code, right? You are coming with a new code line. What code line you are writing now? If there are any calculations, underlying database is HANA database, which is having massive power, full computing power it is having by having partitioning, compression techniques, and massive parallel processing. Why I need to waste that capacity of HANA? So nowadays. For S4 HANA application, if you get any calculation work, immediately it is giving that work to the database. Here your HANA database is doing entire calculation. See if you observe the sizes. Here the calculation is more in classical approach at application layer, but in your HANA database, all the calculations are doing at which layer? At a database layer itself, it is doing the calculations, and then only it is transferring the results to the application. So this is the difference between your old code line and new code line. Earlier we used to write the code to fetch the data from the database layer and load into the application. There you do the processing. But now, just give the query to the database. It is that much intelligent. It can process your query within fraction of seconds on the fly, and expect the result from the database. So burden on your application layer is greatly reduced by using this new code line. So the if you write old code line, if you know how to write a web program on your ECC systems, can you go and directly work on S4 HANA customization? No, for that reason, you need to understand what you need to learn a web on HANA means how you write the code when your underlying database is HANA. Clear? Any doubts? How the logic will work in database layer? Ha! Huh. That's why I'm saying this HANA is not only the database. It is having so many engines, calculation engines, OLAP engine, joiners. There are so many things. It is not a, just like a database. Uh, that's why I'm saying first statement. What I give? It is a very intelligent database. It is more than a database. How it will do? Uh, how it will calculate everything, how it will process, we will see in HANA architecture. Index server architecture will be there. There we can see. You want you want me to show that? How your index server will be? Or we can cover it later. Okay. Yeah, now, we can do that. Oh, okay. I'll show you. Just allow me some time. Yeah, this one. Your index server is having these many engines. See, uh, stored processor in SQL processor, planning engine, MDX engine, okay, and calculation engine, planning engine. All these engines are there. If you throw anything to that, whatever the works comes to these engines, then they will take up that work, and they will process it, and it will throw you the result to the application. So we are going to discuss this. So your row store table, column row store table, we are having. This is your memory area. This is your HANA database index server internal architecture. Your HANA database are services are different. These are the services: name server, preprocessor, compile server, web dispatcher. But this index server separately have all these engines within it. I am showing only few engines. There are so many engines, and SAP don't want to. Reveal how it is working internally in index server. They are just saying you, okay, we are having these these many intelligent engines. If you give any work to that, 
the respective engine will comes into the picture and it will process the if you are having some planning kind of thing then this engine will take that work and it will do the planning for you clear and why should i uh, show you me my how my engine is working to the entire world so internal architecture of index server nowhere sap has released so just they are saying we are having these these engines how uh, trex engine all these engines they are working together and whenever the works comes to that particular engine it will take up that work and it will process it and it will throw you the result that is what sap is saying but they don't say how this planning engine will connect when it this planning engine will take that no nobody if microsoft is revealing you how windows operating system is working well, it is their own code right they don't want to reveal that code to outside of world the same way sap also not showing your hana code internal architectures how they are working we are having these these engines they are working for you that's it okay the next major advantage of your hana database is the last one inset only on delta this is a major advantage of hana database so most of the tables in hana database is what row store tables or column store tables most of the tables column column store tables oh. right column store table is a read optimistic or write optimistic or read optimistic read optimistic you can read easily write of row based tables are write optimistic column store tables are read optimistic okay when you are saying entire your database is most of the tables are column store tables then reading will be very easy very fast fine then what about writing is my writing costly cost more is it not supporting for the writing to the columnar store table for that they have come up with a concept called inset only on delta what is the delta i'll show you see so every every columnar store table every column they're having this okay this is one columnar store table column so they are having two parts here this columnar store table one thing they call it as main storage and second one they are calling it as delta storage so whatever the data you are having in that column already you have some data in that column this main storage have some compression techniques right by default it is having some dictionary compression you maintain some compression techniques so writing on compression compressed data is difficult or easy very difficult it is very costly to write on your compressed data can you write anything on zip folder no so for that reason they came up with a new concept called as delta storage so whatever the new things you want to write on that column you write here so they are writing on delta for reading the reading from main storage okay reading is from main storage reading is in anyhow easy for column na store tables okay fine writing is costly on column na store table for that reason they came up with your delta storage means this area you don't have any compression the basic compression will be have so writing also easy for example if i want real time data if i want real time data what happens from where it will read so it will read from if it is reading from only from here will you get most updated data no, no. already some data is updated here right so when you say read it will read from main storage as well as delta storage and it will combine that result and it will present you when you are reading when you are writing na only it will write from write into delta storage after some time this delta storage will be merged with this main storage and that is called as delta merge that is called as a delta merge 
So now reading is from two tables, writing into only here. So writing also fast now. By, achieve, by having this concept, this memory units, writing also easy on columnar store tables. How they achieved, I'll give you another example. How this delta merge will happen, I'll give you a simple example. You got it? The basic idea? Hello? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, for every column, there will be one delta storage. For every column. For every column, there is a main storage, there is a delta storage. Okay. Now see this one. I am only taking one column in for, uh, example. Okay. Now I am having one thing called delta storage, uh, main storage and delta storage. This is my main storage. Okay. I say this as M1. And this is my delta storage. This I call as a D1. So here it is reading from both the things it is reading and from here it is writing after some time what happens it will create another thing called M2 it will create another storage area called M2 now this M2 means what means delta merge whenever delta merge happened M2 will be created this is M1 plus D1 is your M2 and this is your D2. Now this will be deleted. If it is there, what happens? Memory consumption, right? So it will delete this M1 and D1 and it will create M2 and D2. Now whatever the new data you are writing, it will write to D2. If you want to read, it will read from both. After some time, again delta merge will happen. So what happens? It will delete this one and it will create what m3 and d3 D2. my m3 is what my m2 m3, plus D2. m3 is m2 plus d2 m2 plus d2 and this is my d3 like that it is dropping this memory structure and again it is creating like that it is having this is what called as delta merge operation storage on delta means it is storing the data on delta storage not on main storage why this main storage is having compression techniques reading is very difficult here sorry writing is very difficult here so it is writing on the storage where you don't have any compression technique so by having columnar store table also by having this mechanism called delta merge concept storage on delta merge concept are you achieving high speed of writing So writing is easy, reading also easy. So columnar store table is read optimistic, but SAP HANA is using what? Insert only on Delta concept. By using this option, they are greatly improved the writing on columnar store table. Is it clear? So write operations it is doing on Delta storage, reading from the both it is reading you want real time data you want to read everything so it will read from both if you want to write something only it is writing on delta storage it is having compression applied it won't have compression on that is it clear sir this uh, delta storage main storage division is happening in the cell or like whole table for every column for every column, it is having delta storage and main storage. I'm not saying uh, for entire table, not one delta storage, one main storage. Every column in columnar table, every column has a delta storage and main storage. For each column, it will be for there. each column. For each column, you have delta storage and main storage. For each column, you are having an index. Each column works as an index, inverted index. That is the beauty of columnar storage. So no database is having columnar storage. Only this HANA database introduced this columnar store to by using that it is achieving massive parallel processing. By using that it is achieving the most great compression ratio. And by using this storage on delta, it is achieving writing speed on columnar store table. Is it clear? Clear, sir. Okay. Now okay. Now coming back to your example. Sorry.
what is your example you are having ecc system with 1 tb of database size with 150 gb ram your ram is what 150 gb your hard disk is what uh, your database size is what 1024 gb okay this is your ram okay now if i say if you convert to hana database you can use 200 gb of ram let's take example i am giving within 200 gb of ram you can store all your what is your database size 1024 gb of data so you don't need 1024 gb of ram to store all this 2024 gb of data into ram why by having all these techniques storage techniques compressions okay and uh, partitions all these this data will be shrinked to let's take uh, 100 gb or 150 gb so you need only 100 gb of ram if you go with hana database okay same 2 lakh rupees with hana data you can migrate to hana database and you are getting 10x fast result will you move to hana database yes yes for that reason all the customers are moving to hana database why everybody is it's not forced everybody is going to hana database why the same time earlier you used to have oltp and olap now this database is designed for first OLAP, right? But now it is supporting for OLTP also. So you need not to have two different systems also. You can store your analytics, you can do analytics, you can do transaction, everything on the same database. Here you need to maintain OLTP database separately, OLAP database separately. The cost is reducing, performance increasing. The total cost of ownership is what? <coughs> Decreasing. Are you happy with this? Will you convert to HANA database if I give you these many features? Yes. <coughs> For that reason, all the customers are moving to HANA database. After coming up, okay, this is for HANA database. Now, you change it from, now, first they convinced you for HANA database. Okay, by using the, all these features. Now, what they are saying, if you go to S4 HANA, now they are convincing for application as well. First they migrated to HANA database from different database to HANA. Now they are converting from ECC6 to S4 HANA customers. Why? Here the data itself, your ECC software itself 250 GB. Right? But when it comes to HANA database, 35 GB, within 35 GB. Why? 70 percentage of code here is what? For your performance related code only. Aggregate tables, you need to write any index, uh, indexes, history tables, gone, everything gone. Now your software size is what? Actual software size is 35 GB. Now whatever you do here, everything you are uh, giving instruction to the database, or half of your application work is done by your, your database itself. So will you move to S4 HANA if I show you all these things? Yes. Yes. So all the customers are moving to S4 HANA and HANA database. Yesterday we discussed about application. Today we discussed about database. Why we need to change to S4 HANA and why we need to change to HANA database. If you go with HANA database and S4 HANA, your TCO comes to very less price and your performance is increasing very drastically and you are getting all these features.